In the dim light of dawn on April 5th, 2004, as most of Stavanger slumbered peacefully, a group of masked figures clad in bulletproof vests and armed to the teeth descended upon the money counting central. With military precision, they unleashed a storm of chaos and violence, culminating in the largest cash heist in Norwegian history. Millions of kroner snatched in a matter of minutes, lives forever altered, and a city left reeling in the wake of brazen criminality. David Tosca, known as the Mastermind, had a lengthy criminal history dating back to the 1980s. He was associated with the notorious Twitter gang and earned his nickname due to his cunning tactics. Another key figure was Kiel Alrik Schumann, dubbed the Shadow by police for his skills in disguising himself. These individuals were no strangers to crime with a very long rap sheet. Before the infamous Nokas robbery, there were signs of impending criminal activity. A failed heist at Norway's post officer center in Oslo on October 27, 2003, foreshadowed what was to come. Despite their efforts, the robbers only managed to snatch a fraction of the intended loot due to the delayed money transport. This botched attempt hinted at the audacious ambitions of the criminal underworld, setting the stage for the grander scheme to follow. As the winter of 2004 approached, Tosca and his cohorts meticulously planned their next move. They scouted locations, procured weapons, and rehearsed their escape routes. Tosca rented properties in Sands and Stavanger, strategically positioning themselves near the targets. Meanwhile, Schumann established his base in Hungvag, further solidifying their presence in the area. The robbers spared no detail in their preparations, even test-driving their escape routes to ensure seamless execution. With their sights set on the money-counting central in Stavanger, they braced themselves for the impending chaos. The stage was set for what would become the most audacious heist in Norwegian history. As the clock struck eight in the morning on April 5th, 2004, the tranquility of Norway was shattered by the impending chaos. Eight robbers, clad in bulletproof vests and helmets, converged upon the money counting center. Their faces concealed, they were ready to unleash havoc upon the unsuspecting city. It was the culmination of weeks of meticulous planning and preparation. At 3.30 a.m., the robbers were whisked away to a forest near Stavanger, where they armed themselves and geared up for the impending heist. By 7.40 a.m., all 11 perpetrators had gathered, masked and armed, across from the surveillance camera poised to strike. The stage was set for the brazen attack that would go down in infamy. At precisely eight o'clock, chaos erupted as the robbers sprang into action. A white truck engulfed in flames served as a distraction outside the police station, while the robbers descended upon the money counting center. Armed with sledgehammers and battering rams, they attempted to breach the fortified building, intent on seizing the untold riches within. But their meticulously crafted plan began to unravel as they encountered unforeseen obstacles. The reinforced glass refused to yield to their onslaught, delaying their entry. Frustration mounted as precious minutes ticked away, thwarting their ambitions of a swift and seamless robbery. As the robbers struggled to gain entry, the clock ticked towards 8.08. .08. They were late by eight minutes, and leaned to say every second mattered. The quiet cathedral square was soon to be disrupted by flashing lights and the urgency of police officers Eric Harland and Stefan Thesson. Their Volvo police car rolled in, halting near Church Street with purpose, taking up positions at the corner of the Hens and Moritz store. They scanned the scene, ready for what was to come. They broke into the area, guns in hand, and tied the six guards that were surrounding the premises. They had scanned the area beforehand to ensure that they know where exactly the guards were stationed so they could get to them without any challenges. Inside the cash depot, a scene of turmoil unfolded. Gunmen, their faces hidden, hurriedly stuffed cash into duffel bags. The numbers climbed, reaching a staggering knock 57.4 million. At 8.10, a figure emerged from the Nokas building, Kiel Alrik Schumann, perhaps unknowingly, stepping into the chaos that was about to unfold. Two minutes later, at 8.12, the tension thickened as Officer Fred Sherling, disguised in civilian clothing, attempted to maintain order amidst the confusion. His efforts brought him face to face with Schumann. A moment of uncertainty hung in the air as Schumann, wielding his AG-3, demanded answers. Who are you? Sherling, recognizing the gravity of the situation, raised his hands in surrender. But then, the unthinkable happened. 
Bullets whizzed through the air as the robbers and police clashed in a deadly dance of violence and desperation. The Nokas robbery swiftly escalated into a violent confrontation between the robbers and law enforcement. As the perpetrators attempted to breach the money counting center, they were met with a swift and determined response from the police. Shots rang out, shattering the morning calm and heralding the onset of chaos. Law enforcement officers armed and ready engaged the robbers in a deadly standoff. Bullets flew indiscriminately as both sides fought tooth and nail for control of the situation. Amidst the chaos, civilians scrambled for safety, caught in the crossfire of the brazen attack. Tragedy struck as Chief of Police Arne Sigvert Klungland fell victim to a fatal gunshot wound. The seasoned law enforcement veteran dedicated to upholding the law became an unwitting casualty in the robber's ruthless pursuit of wealth. His untimely demise served as a stark reminder of the inherent risks faced by those tasked with maintaining law and order in the face of unbridled violence. In the wake of Klungland's tragic death, the police response intensified, fueled by a fervent determination to bring the perpetrators to justice. Law enforcement agencies mobilized with unprecedented speed and precision, deploying resources and manpower to apprehend the assailants. However, they had gotten away. While the details regarding their getaway were never told to the public, it is believed that they took $10 million worth of NOK. The streets of Stavanger became a battleground as police officers pursued the fleeing robbers with unwavering resolve. No stone was left unturned as authorities spared no expense in their quest to restore order. Following the chaos of the Nokas robbery, Law enforcement agencies launched a relentless manhunt to apprehend the perpetrators responsible for the heinous crime. Utilizing all available resources, authorities swiftly moved to identify and capture those involved in the brazen attack. In a series of coordinated raids and operations, suspects connected to the robbery were tracked down and taken into custody. The nets tightened around the perpetrators as law enforcement officers closed in on their targets, determined to bring them to justice for their egregious actions. As the investigation unfolded, key pieces of evidence emerged, linking the perpetrators to the scene of the crime and solidifying their culpability in the Nokas robbery. Forensic analysis, surveillance footage, and eyewitness accounts provided crucial insights into the events surrounding the heist. Among the most damning pieces of evidence were DNA traces recovered from clothing left behind at the scene and weapons discarded during the perpetrator's hasty retreat. These forensic breadcrumbs served as irrefutable proof of the robbers' involvement, bolstering the case against them and paving the way for their eventual prosecution. The wheels of justice turned inexorably as the suspects implicated in the Nokas robbery were brought to trial to answer for their crimes. In a courtroom drama that captivated the nation, prosecutors presented a compelling case against the accused, backed by a wealth of incriminating evidence. Witness testimony, forensic analysis, and surveillance footage provided a detailed account of the events leading up to, during, and after the robbery, leaving little doubt as to the guilt of the defendants. In the end, justice prevailed as the robbers were found guilty of their crimes and handed down swift sentences commensurate with the severity of their actions. After a thorough investigation, the police brought charges against 13 individuals linked to the robbery that shook the city. Among them, David Tosca stood out as the alleged mastermind. On a tense day in April 2005, Tosca admitted his involvement in the heist but denied any role in the tragic shooting of Officer Klungland. However, his rap sheet didn't end there. Tosca also faced charges related to another bank robbery at Union Bank in Bryn, Oslo, and a daring heist at the Post Mail Center back in 2003. Meanwhile, another key player, Johnny Thendrup, confessed to being the one caught in the crossfire during the robbery. His admission added another layer to the unfolding drama, but the story took a darker turn two years later when Kiel Alvik Schumann came forward with a startling revelation. He admitted to pulling the trigger that claimed the life of Officer Klungland. DNA evidence found on towels and mattresses used in a botched attempt to burn a getaway vehicle linked to Schumann to the crime scene. Ironically, the perpetrators unknowingly delivered crucial evidence right to the doorstep of the police station in their misguided attempt to cover their tracks. The aftermath of the Nokas robbery painted a vivid picture of justice in Norway. On a somber day in March 2006, the 13 men involved were handed down sentences totaling 181 years behind bars. Leading the pack was David Tosca who received the longest sentence of 21 years. However, the legal saga didn't end there. 
A year later, in January 2007, the Court of Appeal upheld the verdict for 12 of the 13 men. But the 13th man, Thomas Thendrup, found himself in the eye of a legal storm. Despite being acquitted by the jury, Norwegian appeal laws granted the presiding judges the power to overturn the decision. This move sparked heated debate across the nation, shining a spotlight on the complexities of the justice system. Thendrup faced a retrial and was ultimately sentenced to 14 years in prison in September 2007. As if to add a final punctuation mark to the saga, the Norwegian Supreme Court weighed in, tacking on an additional 27 years to the cumulative sentences in June 2007. Amidst the legal wrangling, Ikhmet K, who was also part of the robbery, stood firm in his claim of innocence. Police believed that he was the person who helped the robbers get away. Ikhmet insisted that he was in Stavanger at the time of the heist, closing a drug deal. Despite his protests, he accepted his sentence, but lamented being convicted for a crime he didn't commit. The toll of the case wasn't just measured in years behind bars. It also came with a hefty price tag for the Norwegian state. Estimated at a staggering 160 million Norwegian kroner, the state never paid back the entire amount, and the court never recovered the full amount. Only 7 million was recovered. The statistics painted a stark contrast. In the decades leading up to 2004, Norwegian police had fired a total of 79 shots. Nearly two-thirds of these shots rang out during the chaos of the Nokas robbery in 2004, underscoring the intensity and gravity of the situation. In the wake of the Nokas robbery, Stavanger and the entire nation of Norway found themselves grappling with the profound aftermath of the brutal heist. The repercussions of the crime reverberated far beyond the confines of the money counting central, leaving a lasting impact on society as a whole. Families mourned the loss of loved ones, their lives forever altered by the senseless violence unleashed by the perpetrators. Chief of Police Arne Sigvert Klungland's tragic death served as a stark reminder of the human toll exacted by the callous actions of the robbers, leaving a void that can never be filled. Communities were left reeling in the aftermath of the heist, grappling with feelings of fear and uncertainty as they struggled to come to terms with the brazen attack on their doorstep. The once tranquil streets of Stavanger were now marred by the spectre of violence, casting a shadow of apprehension over daily life. Law enforcement agencies faced intense scrutiny in the aftermath of the robbery, forced to confront glaring deficiencies in security protocols in response mechanisms. The failure to prevent such a catastrophic event laid bare the vulnerabilities of the system, prompting a concentrated effort to bolster defenses and fortify against future threats. Moreover, the Nokas robbery served as a sobering reminder of the pervasive influence of organized crime within society. The audacity and ruthlessness of the perpetrators laid bare the dark underbelly of criminal enterprise, exposing the depths to which individuals would sink pursuit of wealth and power. In the years that followed, efforts were made to commemorate the victims of the Norcas robbery and honor their memory. Memorials and remembrance ceremonies served as a solemn tribute to those three individuals who lost their lives, ensuring that their sacrifices would never be forgotten, one of them being the police lieutenant. As the scars of the Nokas robbery slowly began to heal, Norway emerged stronger and more resilient in the face of adversity. The lessons learned from the heist served as a catalyst for change, driving efforts to fortify against future threats and unite in the fight against crime and injustice. Though the wounds inflicted by the Nokas robbery may never fully heal, the resilience of the Norwegian spirit endures, a testament to the strength and fortitude of a nation united in the face of adversity. The violence and bloodshed unleashed during the heist sent shockwaves throughout the nation, exposing the vulnerabilities of the criminal justice system and prompting a period of introspection and reflection. The legacy of the Norcas robbery endures as a haunting reminder of the fragility of peace and scrutiny in the face of unchecked criminality. The tragic loss of life and the enduring scars left on the community serve as a sobering reminder of the human cost of greed and violence. As we reflect on the events surrounding the Norcas robbery, there is much to be learned and discussed. I invite you to share your thoughts and insights on this pivotal moment in Norwegian history. How has the Norcas robbery impacted you and your community? What lessons can be gleaned from this tragic chapter in our collective history? Let's come together in dialogue and reflection as we strive to understand the complexities of crime and punishment in modern society. If you like our content, don't forget to check out our channel. We've got many more stories from the underworld to share with you. See you in the next one.